Hello and welcome back to the course on blockchain. Today we're talking about a very interesting concept called the Byzantine Fault Tolerance. It's a very important characteristic not only for blockchains but also for any type of decentralized system. So let's have a look. The story goes that a long, long time ago there was a castle which uh, the Byzantine Empire wanted to attack and take over. Uh, it's a, I think it's a made-up story. I actually looked into it, and I think they just used the name Byzantine uh, generals rather than. I don't think it's linked to any specific story. If you know a story, let me know. But uh, nevertheless, one way or another, there's these four generals surrounding a castle, and. Uh, they want to attack it can be more than four it can be any number of generals we're going to look at an example of four they want to attack it but the thing is they can only win if uh, the majority of them come to a consensus of what to do in fact whether they attack or retreat they the majority of these generals have to come to a uh, agreement a consensus on what they're doing is if they uh, say if in this case three out of four say we're attacking and they attack they'll win if three of out of four say we're retreating and they retreat they'll they'll be all safe and fine however if they have chaos and they don't come to a consensus they will be destroyed by the enemy and that's that's the that's how the problem is uh, stands and so among these generals there is one who is the main general the commander of this uh, army and at the same time there's also a traitor. So they don't know who out of these uh, generals is a traitor. They could be a traitor. They might not be a traitor, but they could be, and usually there is. And so they don't know who the traitor is, and he's there to uh, put some, you know, like roadblocks in their way so that they actually don't come to a consensus. So the question is, how do they come up with an algorithm? How do they come up with... Um, a protocol <laughs> a consensus protocol like running a bit ahead of ourselves into the next tutorial here but how do they come up with an algorithm that will help them come to a decision uh, despite there being a trader so let's have a look they can communicate with each other uh, but they can only deliver oral messages so they can't like write a paper and pass it around all of them um, and yeah, so basically that's how they can communicate. Uh, and then let's say, for example, in this case, let's say that this general here is the traitor. There he is. And so what happens is the commander issues the order. Uh, by the way, the commander himself could be a traitor. That's also uh, something they have to keep in mind. Because if, if the commander was not the traitor for sure, they would just follow the commander's orders and that's it. But the commander could be a traitor. So from the perspective of any one of the generals, let's say like, if you're like this general over here, you don't know who out of the three is a traitor and you don't know who to trust. So you have to follow a, an algorithm that everybody agreed to in advance in order um, for this to work. And that's, the, and that's the question. So what is the algorithm? And what the algorithm is, the one that's proposed in the research paper that solved this problem. By the way, it sounds very trivial, but it's actually a very complex problem. There's a um, well, it is, I wouldn't say very, very complex problem. It's, it's a complex problem. And there's a quite a in-depth mathematical uh, proof to it, which includes, you know, if one of the pri one of the you specific cases is when there's four generals, but they prove it for any number of generals. And, um, and we'll see what the answer is uh, just at the end. But for now, the, the algorithm that they're going to be using is they're going to just look at the majority of of the messages that they get and they're going to base their decision on that so let's have a look so the main general issues his order and let's say his order is attack it could be either it doesn't really matter attack retreat uh, re let's remember that as long as they like the majority of them agree on what to do rather than attack or, or they don't have to attack they can all agree on retreating that's totally fine as well but in this case he issues an order to attack uh, we can get rid of these other arrows that are pointing back to the main general because they don't don't matter he 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 issues an order and in this case he's not the traitor we'll have a look at when the when he's a traitor just now but he's made up his mind he doesn't really need to know what they're saying now it's between them to decide what are they going to do with this order you know like they don't know is he the traitor is he not the traitor so what they've agreed is we're going to relay what the general said to everybody else and then we'll take the majority of the votes 
So the trader, being the trader, of course, what he says is the general told me to attack, uh, to retreat. You know, the, the, the green arrows mean attack, red arrows mean retreat. The general told me to retreat. So he says, this guy says to these two, the general told me to retreat. Um, then next one, this guy, this general says to everybody, the general told me to attack because he is just saying what the general said. And then this one says the general told me to attack too. And so now, can they come to a consensus? The question is, can they agree on something? Well, if you look at the majority of decisions, the general has already made up his mind, the commander, so he's attacking because he's issued that order. Uh, but now let's look at these ones. This uh, general got uh, one red arrow and two green arrows. So he's going to say, I'm attacking too. And then this one got... One green arrow, two green arrow, one red arrow. So he's attacking two. And we don't care what the trader says. It decides because he's a trader. <laughs> and because we already have the majority consensus. So by based on that algorithm, they came up with the, they came to a consensus. They, uh, more than half of them have a, are going to attack. And so they will take this castle. They will win. Um, same thing if they had the general said, we're all retreating, same thing would have happened. Uh, they would all just retreat. So they would come to consensus anyway. So that's the case when one of the lieutenants or one of the non-commanding generals is a traitor. Let's have a look at the case when, this is quite fun. Let's have a look at the case when uh, the main general is a traitor. So will this algorithm work? That's the question. So the commander is a traitor. What can he do? He can tell everybody to, uh, you know, do the same thing, right? If he tells everybody to, uh, attack, well, that would be quite silly of him because then they would just tell each other to attack and they would attack and they would take the castle, right? There would be consensus. Same thing, retreat. He would tell everybody to retreat. They would just retreat and again, they win. So they, the, they solve the problem. So what, what's the, the only way he can mess things up is he can actually tell two of them to attack, like these two, and one of them to retreat. And let's see if that messes things up for the army. So, what they do, again, is they just relay what they heard from the general. Uh, this one says, general told me to attack. This one says, general told me to retreat. This one says, general told me to attack. And now let's see if they got the consensus. So here they've got one, two, uh, two out of three. So he's he's attacking. He's attacking two. He's got two arrows and one red one. This one's also got two green arrows, one red one. So in this case as well, they are going to... Uh, attack, or it could have been retreat if the general issued two red orders, one green order, then they would, the three of them would retreat and the army would be safe. So as you can see, what this is showing is that there's this Byzantine general's problem, and then there's this algorithm of taking the majority of the uh, conveyed information or relayed information and acting upon that, basing your decision on that, and that algorithm is Byzantine fault tolerant. The question is, how, what, to what level is it tolerant of, uh, to what level is it tolerant? So the question is, what if we had two traders in this army? In, this, in the case of two traders, you can try it out for yourself. There's no way that uh, they would succeed. They, there's, no, there's no solution to this, uh, this problem if there's two traders. So, and basically, and then, um, what uh, they they did in the paper is they, they proved that, they methodically proved that uh, for, for instance, for this algorithm to work, you have to have no more than 30%, no more than 33% traders. So one third of the army cannot, of the generals cannot be, uh, more than one third cannot be traders. So if you have, you know, 100 generals and they're all deciding, uh, or let's say you have 10 generals and they're all deciding if four of them are traders, then that's it. You're not going to win. If three of them are traders, then this algorithm works. And so that is the level of tolerance of this system uh, in in the sense of traders. Now, how does this go back to you know blockchain or um, or other, like other systems that are decentralized, more technological systems? The thing there is that, for instance, in the blockchain. Um, what happens? We might have somebody trying to attack the system and we need to come up with a consensus protocol, like an algorithm like the, these generals came up with. We need to come up with a consensus protocol, which we'll be talking about in the next tutorial, which will allow us to protect the system from 
uh, traders or from people trying to attack it and so on. And we want to make it as tolerant as possible. So we want to make sure that, you know, it's tolerant not only just to one attacker or two or three or five. So as tolerant as possible. And that's what that's the whole concept of Byzantine fault tolerance. And this uh, notion is actually used not just in blockchain, as we mentioned at the start of the tutorial. It's actually used in many different uh, places. For example, it's used in airplanes because you might you have all these systems talking to each other, all these um, uh, what are called measurements coming through from different uh, gauges and so on. And what if one or two of them fail? You can't just have the whole airplane crash just because one. Uh, engine heat monitor failed and is telling us the wrong thing. So that in that case, you know, you have the airplane flying. It's and the generals actually represent different components of the circuits of the airplane. And everything's working fine, and then all of a sudden one of them fails. Part of the main computer fails, or or the the heat sensor on the engine, or um, the wind speed meter, or something. If something fails. The whole airplane still has to keep going, and so that's called. Byzantine fault tolerance. It has to be. It has to have that characteristic of Byzantine fault tolerance. Uh, it's also used in nuclear power plants, used in rockets. Uh, you know, the ISS space station has specific requirements for rockets that want to dock with it. To which extent are they Byzantine fault tolerant? Because there's so many factors that could uh, jam uh, the computers of the docking um, uh, shuttle or whatever it is. And then it'll just destroy the whole station. For instance, like there's radi radiation, which could uh, destroy the memory or the um, uh, jam the circuits of the docking rocket, and it'll just smash the whole ISS station. And you know, people could die, and that's billions of dollars. Uh, you know, even if there's no people involved. And so, uh, yeah, so that's where Byzantine fault tolerance comes in. So it's a huge concept, even though it looks you know very simple and very kind of like airy fairy. Uh, about some some generals in the Byzantine Empire, it's actually a huge, huge thing in terms of decentralized systems, uh, with special, and systems with lots and lots of components. And blockchain is just one of them, and we'll talk more about this, uh, the application in blockchain next tutorial. But for now, if you'd like to learn more, there's the original paper, the Byzantine generals problem, um, from 1982 by Lamport, Shostak, and Pease. Um, interesting paper, not very technical, uh, but there is some like a logical mathematical proofs if you'd like to go through it. Um, and then there's a, uh, a blog if you don't want to go through all the mathematics in this paper. Again, it's, it's more logic rather than mathematics. It's, it's actually quite fun. Uh, if you don't want to go through all the mathematics, then uh, you can just check out the blog. It's called Understanding Blockchain Fundamentals Part 1 Byzantine Fault Tolerance by Georgios Constant. Topolis, uh, and it's on Medium. The link's here. It's also it'll also be in the um, notes for this course. All right. Hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and uh, picked up some new information on the Byzantine fault tolerance. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Until then, enjoy blockchains.